All right, it's time for another bad podcast. I'm Ben. <laughs> is it good? You usually say, All right, I'm Ben. And wait, this wait, is wait, Dan. Wait, wait. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Ben. And this is Daniel. And it's time for another bad podcast. It's already bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's already had a little hiccup. Yeah. Uh, wow. I completely blanked. Mm. It's Daniel's birthday today. Yo, it is. So no longer Daniel. do we have non-alcoholic drinks for him to drink. Oh, this is still non-alcoholic. Okay. What's <laughs> in the other? Uh, it's a margarita mix. Uh, strawberry lime margarita. Right. So on his first day of being 21, he chooses a girl drink. That's fine. <laughs> That's just how I was feeling. I also hey, dyed my hair. And nothing wrong with that. This ain't water, bro. What is it? Mm. Clearance wine. Mm. Oh, I thought it was that. I'm so no. You haven't even got to that yet. Beer of the week. Philosopher King. Never heard of it. I think Daniel picked it out for I me. I did. Yeah. I think he, after just real... Mark. It looks like Mark. Oh, have you seen that in the Bright Insight? Did I see that? That's that thing over in the Vatican. It's the, the pit, the, um, your third eye. It's, it's the But it's described as something gland. else. The pineal gland. Yes! Yes. Did we just unlock? Yeah, something. <laughs> I don't know what. I have a story. Okay. About something that made me very mad today. Okay. As you may know, as you probably are not aware, and as the listener definitely is not aware, I've been going to Fayetteville every day for the past, well, today was the fourth day. That's 150 miles round trip every mm-hmm. day uh, for school, Walmart school. <laughs> I don't work there. I had to go there for school. <laughs> uh, wow. You don't work at Walmart? No. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I went to the Ozark Armory over there. First of all, you know what? I'm going to start taking a drink every time I say first of all. Okay, good. Maybe a little run out of alcohol. Whoa, dude, dude, I immediately got hit with the smell off that. Here, Is it good? Take a whiff. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> You know what's crazy is hops has the smell of grapefruit. I've just turned 21. I don't know if I would know much about that. <laughs> you ever smell grapefruit? No. I've just turned 21. But grapefruit <laughs> you can smell any time of the life. Well, you can buy them any time of life, but can you smell them? Like, come on. Oh, my God. That's an IPA. Man, that is rough. Mm. <laughs> Let me go suck on my lawn because it tastes better. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> uh, went to the Ozark Armory, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you've ever been there. Uh, it's just a regular armory, not a specific. <laughs> my God! I don't know if you can hear the cats. Like, I just want a nice solitary <laughs> location to film. That's when we stop being a bad podcast and transition into okay podcast. Mediocre. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to a mediocre podcast. Yeah. It doesn't uh, roll off the tongue. No, it doesn't. Um, so we went to the... I, I went to the Ozark Armory, and you would love it because they have a lot of antique weapons. Nice. They have a lot of uh, World War II weapons and oh World War God. I. Like, Do they have swords? They've got like five different Mosins all sold with their... Um, Bayonets? Bayonets. That is awesome. They have the Japanese Arasakas. Mm-hmm. They had some Chinese um, versions of what I would call a Springfield. Like so are we spring- going tomorrow? They had a few Springfields. They had some old Spanish guns. Oh, my God. And a Turkish gun. It's a few other things. All of them are like old-fashioned mm-hmm. rifles. The Springfield looked the coolest, though. Yeah. That sounds dope. There was one more. And I was like, do I buy it today? <laughs> and then they've got a whole... They've got three walls. Uh, what I would say, assault weapons. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, these are all like you remember the the tar from Modern Warfare Two, Brennan. Well, they sell it there. Like oh, really? none of, none of those guns could they really name the real yeah. name yeah. under copyright. But all of those guns exist, and they're they were real counter. They were all in the wall back there, and I was like, first of all, this is Daniel's favorite corner of this <laughs> earth right here. And um, anyway, I'm looking through there, and they had a PPS. 
Really? Now, here's what was really confusing to me, and this is going to segue into the whole part of how I got pissed off. You know, okay, for all those out there, I think like when you are knowledgeable on something and when somebody talks about it, you gleam, glean, glean with an N, mm-hmm. that they're not very knowledgeable. You know if I mean? you have a lot of knowledge on it, you can tell when somebody you can tell when somebody doesn't know. Like when somebody yeah. tells me, "Hey, I've played this game," and I'm like, "Okay," and they're talking but about it, I'm like, "Prestige, like 100 every level." No, no, no. <laughs> but even when they're talking about, like, there was yeah. a specific person that I was talking to about, um, what's that game, Cuphead? Mm-hmm. And they're like describing something, and like, "Yeah, no, yeah. that is not in the game." It's funny. It's it's funny how like uh, misinformation can just kind of spread that way because somebody will interpret something some way, and then they'll tell somebody. Who, if it hadn't been you who knows something about it and they told somebody else, they would then yeah. think that about it. And then it's like, what? I saw everything, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyways, guns, I would say I'm like that. I don't have a sp- great knowledge in the specific things, but mm-hmm. certain things I know a lot about. Mm-hmm. Or at least I have I know about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, if you mention anything to my dad, and this is one of the things, like, uh, I took a picture of a gun today and I called my dad and I was like, hey... There was a gun there. I saw the sheriff, and he's like, "Oh yeah, that yeah, I know about that." <laughs> and I was like, "And there was another one called the public defender." And he's like, "Oh yeah, the four ten or the the forty five Colt." I'm like, "Um, hey dad, yeah. what do you do with your spare time?" Yeah. So people like my dad, when they talk to me, they can clearly tell if I don't know what I'm talking about mm-hmm. if it's about guns. Anyways, I researched the crap out of the Walther PPS. Mm-hmm. You should know probably that yeah. I did. and I was here for most of it. Yeah. So there was the original version of the PPS, and then they came out with the PPS M2. Mm-hmm. Of the M2, there are three variations, okay? All right, there might actually be a fourth. I, as of this moment, I forget. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I'm looking at his things, and he you can't find an original PPS that's new because they don't make them. Okay. So you, you've got to be, buy one that's pre-owned unless there was one, I guess, that they never get sold. But the difference is, on the original, they got a paddle lock, that European release that I really like, Mm -hmm. and the grips are different. Those are the main two from the outside that you can immediately tell. So I look at this gun, and I don't see that paddle lock release. I'm like, what? And then the grips look the same. I'm like, nah. I look at the other PPS, and it's called an M2, Mm -hmm. and it's got like this laser on the the under underneath the muzzle. I'm like. But that's not the main M2. Why did they not call it the full name? Mm-hmm. Like if you call something the basic name, you're thinking you're getting the basic product. You know what I mean? Right. You would want to upsell it. So if I was getting the PPS M2, I'm not expecting to get that laser underneath it because that's not that version. Mm-hmm. That version is called like LE or something. I don't know what. It, I know it's not just the M2. I asked the guy if I can see it. First of all, he goes, are you 21? <laughs> I'm not buying the thing. Yeah dolphin noise I just want to hold it let me look at it sorry but are you 21 or I told him yes and he says can I see ID <laughs> again I'm not buying it I just want to hold it mm-hmm. maybe unbeknownst to me there's a law that you have to be 21 to hold a gun a I w- pistol I wouldn't be surprised yeah I wouldn't be surprised there was tons of Glocks over there like there was I think a whole four foot cabinet just yeah Glocks. I bet there was that's awesome show my ID he pulls it out and he shows it to me, and I'm holding it, and I'm like, this doesn't have the paddle release. Are you sure this is just the PPS? He's like, yeah. No. Well, the PPS is supposed to have the paddle release, and this is a button. He's like, well, they must have changed it. You know? <laughs> I'm like, mm. And then I commented on um, the the M2 name. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, this one's just the M- the PPS. And I, mis- I had misspoken and said, this one's the 9mm M2. I and you... And you can probably guarantee that I know what a nine millimeter is. Mm-hmm. This guy, the guy's like, well, nine millimeters is what it shoots. I'm like, I know that. I'm not an idiot. I just got my words crossed. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That happens. Is it so wrong to say nine millimeter M2? I, I'm sure he could kind of. Yeah. Anyways, they do treat him like an idiot because of that. And I'm like, yes, I get it. You shoot the nine millimeter. I understand that. It's on. It's written on both of these. Yes, I know. And I'm trying to describe it. And I completely forgot to mention to him that the grips were different. The, 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 on both these guns, the grip were the exact same. Mm-hmm. And they both had a, a push button to release the mag. They were the same gun. One was a... 
I would say a higher version. They weren't the PPS and PPS M2. Like yeah. it was. I wanted to tell that guy to fuck off right then, but I wear my Walmart vest everywhere. Yeah. yeah I don't I work there. <laughs> but I wear my Walmart vest everywhere. I wonder if it was like uh he has to he has to know so much about all these guns. He has to know a little bit about all the guns, so he can't know well, a I'm, lot about everything. Well, I'm sure he is knowledgeable in guns, or else yeah. he probably wouldn't work there. Yeah. It's not like our sporting <laughs> goods where people are just tired that don't even know. I'm sure he knew something about them. But I'm also very sure he didn't know exactly what he's talking that, about. This but, specific he, one. but he portrayed that he did know. It. And so I tried to ha- I tried to pick it up. I was like, "Hey, isn't that kind of crazy? That mm-hmm. There's a Walther uh, manufacturer <clears throat> here in Arkansas." And he's like, "They don't manufacture." Like, yeah, they do. He's like, "No, they don't. They they import from Germany. I'm like, <laughs> they may import most or some, but they manufacture there." He's like, "Well, if they do, it's only one or two guns." I'm like, <laughs> "Well, they still make them there." Is that not manufacturing? And he's like, well, I think the new one coming out, I'm like, oh, you mean the PPK? <laughs> You're telling the guy you just basically treat as an idiot that he doesn't know what he's talking about? But I know they're making them there. I called the, where, I called the place themselves. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man, but that <laughs> got me so pissed off right there. I can there. tell. Yeah, I'm getting pissed off thinking about it. Man, you should call him and give him a bad like review. Here's something... For all of well, you, we just don't. publicly trash their story. Or publicly trash them. I'm going to go. <laughs> we to, just did. I'm going to leave a terrible review for them. We just said their name. We just bashed them. I don't remember this guy's name though. I'll probably, it's probably his name's Kyle. Probably Kyle or Chad or like or Chadsworth. Or <laughs> My name is Chadsworth. That's a nine millimeter parabellum. That's a forty-five. <laughs> you can call me Chatty though. Yeah, Teddy. Teddy Chatty. Chadsworth. Chad. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, um, kind of, you got me. I got lost. That, to be fair, oh. that was only the first time we got lost tonight, which is good. Yeah, <laughs> I expected to be a lot more lost. You wouldn't think it, but that wine gets me messed up quick. Really? Yeah, I'm the only one that's drank that far down that this bottle. This week's non-alcoholic drink of the week <laughs> is clean <laughs> or uh, in coastal the raspberry water flavor. It's, uh, I think it's called Clean Cause. I don't know. Get a nice zoom on that. It's like clean and then. Clean vertically and then horizontally it says cause. I don't know what their brand name is. If they wanted to be more sponsorable, they would have a more, you look at it, you see it, you know what it is kind of brand name. As it is, as it stands right now, it just says clean cause yerba mot or mate or however you say that word. Somebody Google it and then put it in the comments. Um, <laughs> the 50% of their profits support recovery from alcohol and drug addiction. So great choice for tonight's sponsor. Put the right up there next to our other sponsor, Philosopher King. Anyway, do we legally have to say they didn't sponsor? Oh us? yeah, they didn't, neither one of those sponsored us. But for the duration of this, I want you to think they did. Neither did Cotton Panda, by the way, or Common Panda. All we are is being a shill for yeah. those that are not even paying us. <laughs> if they want to start paying us, they can. But um, what I was going to build onto after that is for, for a little insight into telling people what bugs you is kind of bad because then they'll do it just to bug you. Yeah, like, but what's a gun, Ben? Like, what? <laughs> my biggest pet peeve, I think, that gets me is I have zero f- what somebody thinks about me. But what I hate is when somebody degrades my pride. Mm-hmm. Like, I hate when people think I have a terrible work ethic <clears throat> if they don't know me. If they're just an idiot and they, and they like, like, if they're just an idiot and they, they, they uh, see me work and they don't like it, okay, but... For people who automatically <clears throat> look at you and go, yeah, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's like, no, I'm okay, you know what I'm doing. How about you watch me and then you can say that. But Well, it's context. I, I don't mind people disliking me. Mm-hmm. I can handle all the hate in the world. I just want, I don't want it to be for the wrong reason. Right. Like you don't like the way my face looks. You don't like the gap in my teeth. You don't like the way I talk. That's fine. Those are all real. That's what. It, <laughs> but if you don't like something that's not real about me, that's when I get like, right. what the hell? Right, right, right. So this guy automatically assuming, oh, he he works. He he does not work at Walmart, and uh, he's he looks like he's less than twenty one, and he accidentally said nine millimeter when he meant to say PPS. Yeah, he's a total idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. I think the guy was afraid I was just gonna pull out a a, a cartridge loaded in the thing and just shoot him in the head because he was just treating me like this guy's about to be another white boy mass shooter. Wow. That's what he. That's the way he treated me, man. 
And you know what I did? I still bought ammo from him. What the hell? You supported him? You supported that man and his... his... Dude, afterwards, I'm like, I'm so <laughs> cuckold. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did you do that? Uh, well, one, I honestly don't know where else you can buy 7.62 by 54R. I know of other places, but I meant like here mm-hmm. in town. Why not just ammo.com? By the way, I didn't want to wait for this it. This episode is brought to you by. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, anyways, that's my story. And if you want to hear a story that goes on past that, you want to know why it took me so long to come home from work? Yeah, why? Because after being heated up, mm. I go log cool in onto our main thing and then I see our survey is up. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell them exactly how I feel right now. So I stayed there and I wrote a very detailed how exactly I felt. That's good. I'll probably be out of a job soon. You don't work there though. No. And I definitely probably won't be after they read that. Right. That's good. Freedom. I don't know how much of this I'm speaking too much that I shouldn't. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, that's my story that happened today. I'm tired of driving. I'm tired of it, man. Well, I think the way that man treated you is kind of like why you can't judge anybody by just their looks alone or what your first impression of them is because it's misconstrued misconstrued another one thing i want to say is as much as people dog walmart and just as and as much as you might have a bad um engagement with an employee every once in a while i think people who work at walmart have a higher expectation when they go out because of constantly being told of how to take care of people even if that's not the experience you get at walmart that is like they constantly bring. I agree. You take care of people. Yeah, I you're agree. you're courteous. You, you know, take care of people if they're mm. within a certain distance. You say hi. So, I guess when I'm out in public, I kind of expect. Oh, this is a business. It's not. They even, gotta treat you just the same way. It's not even just a um, a company thing. I think it's a moral thing. Like in in yourself, like I think if you treat people a certain way, you kind of and it's a good way. Like you know, with the same respect, same decency, you would you would treat you know anyone. I think if you treat people that way and then you don't get it in return, you're setting yourself up thinking that's how everyone should be treated. So you are kind of like, well, why are you being an asshole? Like, what the f***? <laughs> but. We talked about people being basically bad or good. Yeah. And I believe they're basically bad. Mm-hmm. And I probably should expound upon that and just say, I think, well, never mind, I won't. I will say, though, that here, I think people normally are nice mm-hmm. at least here in our hometown mm-hmm. maybe even broader to i think they're i that's something i've noticed like i deal with people every day in my job and i've noticed there are people who are nice outwardly and are inside kind of maybe not that nice and then there's those people who are like genuinely so like just good you can kind of tell they're like a good person uh i've, I've only encountered like i've encountered far less people like that than i have People who portray this outwardly, like, oh, you know. Like, well, I don't like fake niceness. Yeah. But I would prefer that well, no, over the that's, dickish. That's not a bad thing at all to be polite. Being polite, even if you're not feeling, that's that's perfectly like, you need to be that way. What I mean is, there are people who are like, literally so genuinely good that they, like, they just genuinely treat everyone like with the like the purest form of kindness like i get a, dude, i get a that's few how i feel about like sable that. dude yeah i've I never been that actually. i don't think yeah. i don't think i've ever been that way no i told you i'm not like a people person there's a few people that i'm like yeah i'm gonna be around like you guys i'll be around you oh yeah <laughs> nice echo thanks or surround i don't know uh but sable one of the things about her is she genuinely is Probably the best-hearted person I've ever met in my life. And you'd be the best one to be able to say that because it's like when you're alone or with like very few people where that kind of shows, you know, when nobody's around to impress, but you're still like that way. So I feel like that's you're the only. Dude, she is the nicest yeah. person I've ever met. Yeah. In uh, I don't know. I feel like that's gonna mean people take advantage of her, but people have, yeah, especially with her artwork, though. I got my name. Shout out to her artwork. A year ago, she painted me her face, which hangs above my bed. You know what? At the outro, 
We'll just have like a nice symphonic melody playing while I'm yes. drifting asleep. To <laughs> and then they'll have a still of that. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just like back up from it. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and then you turn and there's Daniel sleeping in his bed. <laughs> so does that mean Brennan's coming over to film me sleeping after? <laughs> yeah. I want to start filming sketches. Yeah. I had. A, yeah. Me too. I Actually, I want to film playing too and have that use as our music instead of mm-hmm. having to use other music. Hopefully, by the time this airs, we'll have released the other one, and a hopefully that has our Twilight Zone themed little Oh, yeah, I remember that one. I was kind of proud of that, honestly. Oh, I want to talk about the last Twilight Zone I watched. Okay, what was it? It was almost about a simulation. It was about dreams. It was about... the this starts out, this guy's just kind of looking at the distance. He's sitting in a chair next to this other guy behind a table, and the guy, he's like, hey, they're coming. And all of a sudden, lights come on, and these people are coming through this door, and these more lights come on, and it shows he's in a courtroom. End of the thing is basically, he is dreaming. Everybody believes they're in reality, but they're just in his dream. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to explain to him, he's like, if you kill me, he's getting tried for murder. He's like, if you kill me, you all die. And I keep dreaming this same scenario every single night. We're going to be here tomorrow night. And then he's explaining different things. And then constantly throughout the thing, like, he's in jail cell, death row. And he, he's like, hey, what time it is? And the guy looks at his watch and it says the time. And he's like, and that's another thing. Why would you have a watch on death row? You shouldn't be able to have that. He's like, does that not tell you it's kind of weird? It's a dream. Like, this little inconsistencies yeah. that when you think about. Mm-hmm. My, for the past, like, Six years, every day I'll just go, that's really weird. <laughs> Something will happen, I'm like, isn't that just odd? Yeah. Just the idea of gravity. Isn't gravity just odd? I was on Twitter.com, and um, <laughs> you know what is like so weird? Like all these Twitter.com? Big- Why can't you just say Twitter? <laughs> I'm on the Tweeters and the Facebooks. Dude, my dad also mentioned again to me, he's like talking about YouTube. He's like, yeah. man, YouTube is where you need to go to learn, right? Dad, I just had a bad experience with this guy treating me like an idiot. Don't you do it too? <laughs> anyway, I was on Twitter.com and um, this uh, this Wendy's ad came across my feed, and it was like, "This is no simulation here. Uh, spicy nuggets are back." And it's like, what if that's just the powers that be putting off these like promotions or sorry, these like adverts? Are like, you don't live in a simulation. Stop thinking that. Look, this trendy Twitter um, celebrity restaurant is going to tweet about it and it's going to make it like a little little cute little thing you know you're not in a simulation but deep down it's like you're not in a simulation you're not in a simulation you're not like ingraining it into our so you, you don't heads. ruin the whole thing yeah uh in fact <laughs> this is going to sound funny okay do you remember in Inception when mm-hmm. he's discussing about don't think about it being fake because if you do everyone will look at you mm-hmm. remember that yeah Several times throughout the day when I'm driving by somebody or I'm walking by, I'll look at them and think, are they just going to start staring at me? Because I'm thinking about it being a simulation. I'm like, are they just going to start looking? Also, there's a new series on Netflix called The Island. I think I already Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. It's it's reminiscent of a movie called The Island with Ewan McGregor, which turned into a whole thing. (laughs) But um, You know what? After we talked again... Shut up! He's yelling at the cats. This episode could be brought to you by um, UniqueCandles.com um, This candle doesn't look very unique But believe me they have many more To offer you um, Other than this one Just take a candor At Goose He's fine Is he? <laughs> he looks a little dead <laughs> Uh Say we'll stop watching our last podcast. Why? That when I started talking about Dark Crystal, mm. I'm going to mention it one more time. Okay. <laughs> I'm Please so back and forth it because it, every time something new, I find out some new information about the lore or whatever. Mm-hmm. No one cares about this. I understand that, but I cannot yeah. live. I'm glad with you the, understand. I cannot live with the idea that I've put out information that might possibly be false about something that is completely made up. Yeah, I can kind of tell. It's like your thing. Like you don't want mis. I don't want to misconstrue. Anytime I accidentally tell you guys something, I'll be like, Sable, text them. I know. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been on the other end of that a couple times. <laughs> oh, yes, because you're one of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All I want to say is I may have been wrong about a few things, but I would only think that because I went and watched 
videos specifically dedicated to explaining it. And then okay. I thought, how did I waste my time doing this? Yeah. I'm done talking about it now. We can okay. talk about something. We're now. moving on. What's the next what's the next topic? Did we even think of one? We don't What do you think we are? A good podcast? <laughs> hey, I wanna check out Bright Insight again. Yeah. Can we deep dive into one of his videos and like discuss it? Yeah, I'm down. Specifically, do you want to talk about Atlantis? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Now this is gonna be I'm gonna kill that thing. The cat. He's talking about the cat. He's gonna kill the cat. Um this is gonna delve into the realm of I don't think they can hear it, so when you go like this, I don't hopefully they can't hear it. I don't That's know. pretty loud. It's pretty loud, I agree. <laughs> Please put a top. <laughs> Um, what I was going to say was if we talk about that video it's going to get kind of like I, I don't remember it a lot so there might be some we can't mis- right now. misinformation we can't right now. Yeah. well we could we could talk about it but we'd be saying all these things and then we'd watch it back and be like oh no that's not- we got that wrong yeah <laughs> and then I would not be able to live with myself and the next week we'd have to talk right, about right. it again basically there's like Atlantis or something that's all you need to know you're 21 dude I'm your 21. hair's blue yeah shout out I didn't mean that it um, looks like crap. I meant like it, I, it looks like crap on me. Uh, someone who actually knows how to like like Sable, it looks fine on Sable, so they can still sponsor us. Because I don't, I didn't mean to, earlier. I said they look like crap. How do you go about getting a sponsor? Oh, first you have to be good. Um, like a brand won't want to attach itself to you if you're literally us. Obviously, by talking about guns, we're never gonna sponsor. Well, not just that, but like just. You just want to be good <laughs> and um, presentable, and like you want to be something that a part a brand would want to put their face on and say, "Hey, we support them." We're not that right now, uh, but then there's a whole other lot of things you got to do, like reach out to them, fit a certain blah blah blah. Not we're not <laughs> nothing that we are. <laughs> hey, speaking of branding and rapport. I've talked about Jamie's. Mm-hmm. I did a whole thing for him. Yeah. Two things. You know how everybody on Little Birdie will trash whoever talks about a bad experience they have at a restaurant? Yeah. They're like, did you talk to the manager? Why can't people just say, no, I had a experience? Does it always have to be well, broadcast? I mean, does it always have to be like put down like they've done something wrong? I'm kind of on the fence about it. Yeah. I can see where you're, why you are. Because, but I've gotten over that fence. I've well, been on that fence. I've sat and I've teetered on. and I said, you know what? <laughs> this I'm getting off this hold fence on. and I'm going to get on that side. I would want someone. <laughs> I work in the food industry. Okay. Uh, it's a big part of my life. I work two shifts every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's You could say it's most of my life. So I, I had to choose to kind of either um, keep being like depressed about it or start <laughs> or start to like it. Or be yeah, and passion. try to make it something that I can that I like. So I've I've taken it, I've I've taken it more seriously than I had in the past. And uh, as it's such a big part of my life, I would rather someone who had a poor experience. Again, he's making a face. Why the can't cat. they stop? Why do they have to constantly? It's fine. I would rather have a customer who had a poor experience bring it to me, bring it to my manager, bring it to one of my servers. You know, rather than hold on, I see you make rolling your eyes. I went the cats, dude. Oh, okay, well listen. Uh, and then if they still had a bad experience, like it was the manager didn't do everything they could to make up for it, you know, make it right. Then yeah, go on Facebook, whatever. But I feel like if they do nothing to um, to make it right, if they do nothing to get, you know, get things fixed at the restaurant or at the place of business, then they're kind of putting that on themselves. Because a lot of times I don't know if you didn't enjoy the food. If you tell me. Because every time someone checks out, I'll be like, how was it? I'll be like, it was great, thank you. If you tell me that to my face with a smile on your face and you walk out and put me on Facebook like, blah, 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 how, would I, how was I supposed to fix it? I could have given you your meal for free if you didn't like it. Now, the reason I think it's so important is because of where we live and businesses are so, there's so many of them and they're so small and there's not enough patrons for each one. And so a lot of small businesses struggle. So when you go on Facebook, of which, did you know everyone in this town there are more people in that group than there are in this town. That's because there are people. There were like people Wyoming. arguing with me about something, and they were in yeah. Chicago, Illinois, there are and Missouri. Don't even, yeah, it's it's the weirdest this thing. This woman said, "Don't don't speak for the community," and I said, "Who the f- are you? You live in f- Missouri. Like, I live here." It's like it's like 
it's become like a famous group because of all the posts or something. But yeah, people from all over, like California, te- there's all the time I see it. I was defending the community. They were talking about panhandlers, <laughs> and I'm like, well, people just want to give to somebody who they think want to abuse it. And mm-hmm. she's like, don't speak like you're <laughs> Like, I'm defending the f- community, but I'll I'll keep that in mind. It makes me narrow minded. Sure. Yeah, you're right. But what I mean is, when you go on that. Oh, side. again, when I was when I, when I mentioned that I was from Harrison. Yeah. I was in my class, and the guy's like, "Oh, aren't they racist bad there?" And yeah. I'm like, "No. Am I not supposed to speak for the community? Are you f- racist, girl from Missouri? Huh?" He's really mad at the lady from Missouri. Um, no, just. Yeah, I I'm get mad at this point. beer for being disgusting. I get your point. The beer is disgusting, and yeah, there's a back lot to of you. I, I did not forget what you were talking about. It's okay. Um, I was just saying. Do you know every can has a seam? <laughs> I just want to say every can has a seam. What does that mean? Where it was put together. We just think of a can as, oh, it's a cylinder, but it was at once a flat thing that was put into a seam. Okay. Or has a seam. Okay. You see the seam goes right there. Okay. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> my point about that is uh, there's a lot of people in that group. And if somebody, if five potential customers, you know, saw that post and they were thinking about eating there for lunch and they saw it like, I'm going to go to Burger King instead or McDonald's instead because, you know, I know I'll get a perfectly regular little burger instead of, you know, because they see that post and it turns them off from going there. That could really hurt a business. So I feel like if you don't bring – now, if it's something outside of the manager's control or, like, like there was mold on the floor or on your food or something, go ahead. Yeah, that needs to be made public. But if your order got made wrong – and you didn't bring it to my attention and you go on Facebook, you basically deserve to have your rights taken away. No. <laughs> now, we have different opinions, but we I have also worked on food. And where my opinion differs is because I agree with you in the fact of if they complain about not being taken care of. If you complain about <clears throat> you, have a, you have a bad experience and no one took care of it for you, like somebody doesn't like their food and they didn't comp it, but they never even tried. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I agree with that not being broadcast. But I also believe some people just won't like your food. I have talked about the curry mm-hmm. and how much I loved it one time. And well, then now I don't. I and then made... now I do again. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody saying, I don't like this food. Mm-hmm. No, that's fine. Or but... or uh, saying, this is exactly what happened to me today. Because just like auditors coming in. Mm-hmm. You want to find a trend of the business. And if the business has a, a trend of doing something wrong, just because somebody brings it to light and it gets taken care of doesn't mean the next person, it won't be wrong for them too. I understand exactly what you're saying because mess ups happen. But I think if somebody is silent about it, that's how you, like, I wish it's like when people come to visit the store to see what's going wrong. They always announce it. And, of course, we always try to get everything fixed before they get there. Mm-hmm. So they don't ever see the real problems. I People just need to come in, eat, and then post that experience. Because that experience will be the norm. Right. Sometimes you're going to get outliers. I think you'll get a lot of outliers in if you don't say anything to the staff. Like if, if it's a new business. But and it, wouldn't, that be the, wouldn't that be the norm? Well, no. Hold on. If, I'm saying if it's a new business and you go in and eat and you don't say anything to the staff but you report your result and there was something wrong, then that's how a business won't grow because if they're just starting I out, see that. Yeah. I, I understand exactly what you're but talking about. But I get about. what you're saying as well. Like, yeah, post your un, unadult, unadulterated just review how it was. Yeah. That's, I think trying not to dig at a business that is trying to grow. Mm-hmm. If it's an established business, there's a lot of gray area. <laughs> you know what I mean? I always say. Well, there is a lot. I don't always say because this is the first time I've ever said this recorded. I think things are black, not black and white. They're always a gray scale. Yeah. So I think there's a middle ground where we probably can agree on something like, yeah, that should be posted. But I'll agree with you. You shouldn't just tear down a business and just say don't go there because it's all we when if the majority of people no, like it. If it's probably are- – yeah, but if there are a lot of those reviews and it's a lot, it keeps happening, then I can see again why that's necessary. To- you see, guys, this is how two people <laughs> in today's society should be able to talk. Yeah. <sighs> but um, <laughs> it can also be good for a business if all of your posts, like all of your reviews are good. Then that's great. You know, you want that exposure. But so, yeah, there is gray area. Like, go ahead. I wanted – there's two things that I was thinking – one, I was going to talk about Jamie's new place, and that's why we started talking about Jamie's and oh, the yeah, reviews. Marie's. I want to talk about Marie's. Okay. But first, I had this discussion with my dad. Why don't we 
like we talk a lot about this Food? town. Like, why don't we like put this on like the little birdie group or something? Because there's some things I say. Yeah, I would be nervous about <laughs> that. I don't want broadcasting because there's gonna be a lot of people that go, "Why the dolphin noises? <laughs> when, when is he gonna release those?" You know what though? Um, you can't grow if you're always wonder, like worried about what people think. Yeah, but I don't. We're not even close enough to growing to the point where I don't need a job. I yeah. still need a job. No, I, I got to, you. I guess that kind of says that I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> My yeah. uh, part of the survey was: Do you feel comfortable being yourself at work? And I hit hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I put a one because no. Yeah. I mean. I think my personal self is a big turnoff to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I can. Agree so I have to fake myself a lot. Uh, I was talking about tipping to my dad. Mm-hmm. I had ate at a place. It was it was Red Robins. My meal was like fifteen Yum. bucks, and I put a five dollar uh, tip. And he's fifteen like, bucks. Yeah. Okay. And I put a five dollar tip. My dad was going off about like what kind of a percentage I put. And this is where you as a server might really dislike somebody like me, or maybe you think that that's an accurate way. But I disagree with paying a percentage of the total bill. I think, and I think this makes it for a server server more accurate to be compared to a regular worker who gets paid a regular wage. I think there's a nominal amount put on each labor. Picking up a bowl bringing it to the floor. I think no matter what's in that bowl, just carrying it is going to be a certain cost. I don't think carrying a $1,000 burger versus carrying a $10 burger should make you earn more for carrying that burger. So if your bill is $1,000, now the amount of things you do during Mm. that meal will, I think, changes. Well, hold on. I don't (laughs) think it's the expense of the... Okay, so what I get what you're saying, but I don't think it's if you went in by yourself and spent $1,000. I think it's... Most when bills are really high, it's usually because there were fifteen people at the table. This is not, and the server is doing like six things. Like, well, you should pay then by should, that service, not by the percentage of the bill. Right. So I think if no, yeah, if you never got checked on and he was spilling drinks everywhere, yeah, I agree. I mean, like I always, almost always, pay at least five dollars. Anytime I go, I mean, we, mm-hmm. if I pay four dollars for a meal, but I get the same service as if I went. To a different restaurant, I still pay five dollars, so I can pay a hundred and twenty percent tip. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean I paid a really good tip. I I still paid that person for doing a certain job. Now, if that person is waiting on twenty people, I get that. If your if your meal is is an expensive ticket or not, and you're just one person, that's yeah, tip the same amount. I think it kind of goes into like you tip on the labor used. Yeah, because when I have like forty people or like realistically like 12, 15 people at a table, and Personally, I don't, I don't really care about the tip thing, like tip or don't tip, but it is gratifying. You're, you're paid tips. higher than most servers. Though. Yeah, I'm paid, I'm paid a certain wage, and then tips are just extra. But, um, um, it's gratifying when somebody tips you. But it's also, like, I don't care if they don't. A lot of people don't. But um, if there were 15 people and you did tip, and it was like, like three dollars, and you're ticket there were 15 of you and their, your ticket was like 187 bucks it's like well i'd rather you just didn't tip. <laughs> yeah i would rather you just kept that three dollars since you needed it so bad. like i don't where, the, where okay. the differences are is say you're i'm talking about specifically just the cost of your yeah food. exactly if somebody is waiting on 15 people yeah they deserve more than five dollars yeah but i don't, don't think it should the depend price of the ticket yeah my dad always <clears throat> and I don't, everywhere you go, it'll show you. 20% I couldn't even of your tell bill. you. Like I don't even know. Like the fifteen, I just tip. I kind of like you. I think. Well, I tip almost un unbiased. I tip no matter what. Like yeah, I want a Sonic, and all someone does is bring me a drink. Now I don't tip a do. Sonic. I do because I work there. A lot of people give job. me hate for not tipping at Sonic. That's actually the only, <laughs> that's one of the places you should tip. I think any place that pays you minimum wage that is well okay. They pay the, me four bucks. So. Here, here's here's a, a prop. Here's the problem that people don't understand with uh, uh, serving jobs either is they think that just because, like at Brick Oven, I think they started at two thirteen an hour mm-hmm. waitresses or and waiters did. People think that, that means that they're gonna go home with like a ten dollar check and they'll never have any food. No, if you don't make in tips, what would be equaled minimum out to wage. minimum they wage? They make it up. For they will pay you. Now you probably won't stay a waitress very long mm-hmm. because you'll probably get fired for because they think you're a terrible server. But it's not like they're going to ever make less than me. Mm-hmm. 
four years, I still didn't make as much as the worst server there. Yeah. I remember everyone bragged about how much they would make a day. And I'd be like, I've been here 10 hours and you in one table cleared more than I did. Like in tips? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's perfectly fine and safe to say that's because you're a man. Like women get so many more tips. Like, and it's, 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 it's because of like weird and bartenders. old men. Yeah. I mean, shout out to Joey Luker. He's probably not even listening. Hell yeah. I don't know who that is. Hell yeah. He was a bartender at a, a brick oven. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, women will get a lot. He gave me my first mimosa, <laughs> which is which is wrong. We should demolish the system. <laughs> uh, because, but I was talking sexist. about my dad, and my dad in every business you go to, and especially with those little like, um, and it's creepy. Those uh, card reader errors. <laughs> yeah, er, not errors. Those card reader machines that are kind of like everywhere in Branson, like an iPad. Yeah, it's basically an iPad it's on a the stand. Square. That's what we have. <laughs> Yeah, but for the customer, it's at the on the customers' tables. Oh, okay, yeah. It, and if you want to pay there, and it'll pop up like a little swipe wherever you like, mm-hmm. and it will show you the percentage of your bill. And it's mm-hmm. like, I'm not gonna pay twenty bucks on a hundred dollar meal was expensive. Yeah. yeah. Now, if that person was waiting on twenty people, yeah, I would definitely pay way more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the first time I started thinking about this was when my when I worked at Brickell and my friend. He came in and he just got a brownie and ice cream and he put like ten dollars as a tip. Yeah. And people were going crazy. And it's like, yeah, it does seem crazy, but at the same time, if you think about it, you're paying for that labor of that person right. to walk back and forth. That's what I think when people, I don't know, I pay for the, what I would consider the labor, mm-hmm. not based on the bill, because then you're paying. And that, then if you do that. If you buy a four dollar brownie and you only pay ten percent or fifteen percent or twenty percent of that four dollar brownie, then that person who did the same amount of job or same labor is all of a sudden underpaid for doing that labor. You know what I mean? So then yeah. they just walk for a bowl of something, and they only got a, a less than a dollar. I can't even do the math on that. What's ten percent? That's forty cents, and then times two, which would be twenty percent. So that's okay. eighty cents. Eighty cents is twenty percent of four dollars. Yeah. They got paid eighty cents, and if they got a bowl of ten dollars soup and took it to somebody, they just made twenty uh, two dollars on that. Mm-hmm. They did the same amount of work. They shouldn't get paid eighty cents and then two dollars. I think they should get paid two dollars per trip. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. I I've never your labor uh, has a monetary value. I've never tipped on the uh, like percent thing of the ticket because I think that's crazy to me that you've never done that. Well, it's because. Um, I was like homes. I was raised like on the like outskirts of what is like the normal. fringe of society. Yeah, I was ra- <laughs> no literally like I. What was normal was always here, and I was always here. Yeah, and so I never tipped on the ticket, like on the percentage of it. Um, I just always tipped the same, either the same amount or more. Like, See, I I think that was a better way to be. be yeah, raised. there's like a minimum amount I would tip, which I would say you know, is you know around five dollars, and and um. It would go up, you know, if 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 I felt, you know, like it was an exceptional service. You know what I also hate? Hmm. Is when people say, this is going to be controversial. <laughs> How can you say something so controversial? So okay, brave? what is it? Is I hate when people go, if you can't afford to tip your waitress, then you don't afford to go out to eat. And you know why I hate that so much? Hmm. And I will speak from experience. i only making seven twenty five an hour. Your life sucks. Yeah. You're making seven twenty five an hour. Now, of course, minimum wage is a lot higher now. I say mm-hmm. a lot higher, but it, it's, it's a couple higher. bucks higher. When I started, seven twenty five an hour, I would work all day long and still make less than servers. I would work all day long and make less than everybody. I had hardly any money to pay for my bills, mm-hmm. for my, my car and my phone and everything like that and my insurance. But you're telling me, as much as I can't stand what I'm doing, I'm like, my life sucks. I'm strapped. That I don't get the little, the little like extravagance of going out and having a meal. <laughs> You're telling me because I can't afford to give somebody five extra bucks. Yeah. That I worked for. I don't think that's true at all. Like when I, they would be making that money up if they didn't make minimum wage as it is. Yeah, I am. Um, um, I have like I said, I have no problem with somebody who doesn't tip. I know not everybody. I would tip you. I and I'm at a place where I can tip. No, I I get that, but I don't care when people don't. Like I I I know there are people. A lot of times I'm like, can I afford to do it? Like, but <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I have no problem when somebody doesn't because you should be, you should have the luxury to be able to go out and have a meal. If you have, you know, 10 bucks for that day to eat and that's in your budget and you want to go have an $8 meal 
or a nine dollar meal you do that and keep your dollar like i don't care seriously people you can have you have that luxury this is like america i don't <laughs> think your tip think of this my dad married a woman mm-hmm. my mom who had two kids already and my dad was making seven something an hour mm-hmm. people say you could afford more back <clears throat> then but there was also less to buy mm-hmm. there wasn't thousand dollar phones people weren't going on sulfur mines trying to get that shit okay but anyways it's not like my dad had a a ton of cash and he shouldn't have been shamed for wanting to treat you know go to treat his family out yeah. to a meal no, instead of exactly. eating ramen noodles every night exactly I have no problem with somebody who doesn't tip whether it is for financial reasons or just whatever I don't care if you don't tip but no dude I think I just fell in love with you right now <laughs> okay look we agree wholeheartedly on that yeah now personally if you can afford a tip I think you should mm-hmm. but I, I don't, don't think anyone who chooses to. the serving job should yes. ever demand. Yeah. Agreed. I don't think anyone should ever demand that somebody else give you money. And I... I, I speak it's, from... It's being nice the, when they do, but I don't expect it. That's don't, the don't way I go it. into it. Now, for those people who are making that two bucks an hour, yeah, that sucks that you're not going to get that extra money to cover more than minimum wage. But guess what? Now you're living like the person who does make minimum wage in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. When I was in the kitchen and every day I would listen to people bragging about how much they made in tips, I was like, guess what? I made a third of what you did. When I worked at And Sonic, I worked three times as much as you did. When I worked at Sonic, they would tell me, because they would make so much money in tips, they would tell me, just report the minimum amount that makes that you know makes it to where you made your quota. And then don't report the rest. Keep it, you know, because they'd tax, like, tax you or whatever. Take it out of your paycheck or something like that. Um... Yeah, you're supposed to report all your cash because right. the government they told wants to me all that. They told me all that, and um, I never ran into the opportunity, the, the chance to do that because I never even made my like quota and tips because I was like a guy. One time, this lady tipped me twenty bucks, and I was like, "Are you serious?" Yeah, one. She's time, like, and "You're like, did you make a mistake?" No, I went. I, she 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 gave me the twenty bucks at the window when I was giving her food, like when you pay at Sonic, and I was like, "Are, are you sure?" Like, thank you so much, and I was like shocked, so I went back inside, did my, and then. She was still eating in her <laughs> stall, and I went back out. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, thank you so much. Like, I didn't get a chance to tell you, but thank you. That, that means a lot. Uh, so I was glad I was able to go back out there and tell her that because I was so, like, shell-shocked. I was like, I, th- mm, uh, here's your straw. And I was like, are you sh-? in the moment, you know? But I went back and thanked her. You know what? But I, I never made enough to where I didn't have to report yeah. my tips. I was like, what are you talking about? Don't That's why I said that. <laughs> I think that yeah. brings up a good point, too, because I think if people didn't feel that it was expected of them, mm-hmm. they'd be more inclined to do it because people want to be appreciated. Mm-hmm. And so people might tip you more if they didn't think, oh, I he's have expecting to. A tip. He's expecting this. Well, this isn't I a tip. thank you. That's why I tip because I don't, I didn't expect tips ever. And I still don't at Sonic or anywhere. Like, I didn't expect Dude, That's them. a beautiful mindset. Yeah. So. Well, you just shouldn't expect You have a beautiful it. brain. <laughs> Thanks. Can dude. we examine it someday? There's a good movie, I think, A Beautiful Mind. Um, yeah. Um, but when you do it, you go out of your way and you tip them. It feel, first of all, it feels better on the receiving end. You're like, you're like they didn't have to do that, but they did it because I gave them good service or just because they have this principle, you know, and that just means a lot. Um, but then it's also better for you as well because, you know, like as the tipper, I mean, it's just great all around. I think that goes more into... What I what I don't like about society, and that's when you're expected to do small talk. Mm-hmm. Talking to when somebody asks you, "How's your day?" or mm-hmm. you know that that person does not care about your day. Yeah. So I've done my absolute best that if I ask somebody that to get ready to listen, like well, devote man. my attention. I I took classes on this, like attentive listening. You you drop what you're doing, <laughs> take that thing out of your ear if you got yeah. a walkie. You look at somebody and you point your feet towards them because if you were facing them, you're ready. It might get creepy. I don't know. No, you're but engaged. If if you at least give somebody your well, now I don't do it when I start drinking. Like right now, you just try to speak and I cut you yeah. off. I don't do it when I start getting stuff in no, me. I but can tell. It's okay. I do my best if somebody starts talking to try to listen. Except mm-hmm. when I'm at my house. <laughs> Apparently, I'm an asshole at my house. Well, when me and my for eight years or more, me and Maya have at the start of our like Skype call every night, we ask about each other's days and then we, we don't gloss over it. We actually like talk about them. Like, well, cause you know, yeah. each other cares. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when I think if you, sh- if you ask something like, I hate that, like small talk, like, how was your day? Like, and you're like, you oh, know that's good. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's good. But you don't, they don't care about your day. They, they kind of, I guess a more direct question would be, what was the overall mood of your day? It was good. 
But if they say, how was your day, you know, then you, you kind of... Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> people people go through a list of things, like check boxes that they think they need to go through to be polite. To be, well, that's what I was talking about. There's there's Fakeness. people who fit the who fit the bill, they're hitting all the check marks, but it is fake because they don't they're hitting the marks but they don't actually they're not coming from a place where it matters. They they're hitting the marks because they're told they need to. They're hitting all the checks. So that's fake niceness, but it's it's still nice that they're polite enough to be fake nice. You know what I mean? Because there are some people who aren't. But then there are those people who are like, they'll put your, they'll f- literally ask you and want you to answer, and it's just, it's like a, like a deeper kind of like kindness, I think. People yeah. who do that, I, I think probably get a better reception. Yeah. I, also, another thing that I try, I've really tried to work on, and I think I might be right there at almost perfection, is you ever talk to somebody and you can see their like lips starting to purse because they're ready to speak. Mm-hmm. Is I would be the same. Oh god dang it! This cat's got a claw in my. He's over here purring so much, and he's flexing his paws on me. Uh, is keeping yourself from doing that because you're all you're doing then is thinking of when can I speak and when yeah. can I reply. Close your mouth, yeah. relax, just listen. And if you forget what you have to say, you're fucked. <laughs> if you're like me, you'll never remember until five hours later you have to text somebody. But I. That's, Especially when I haven't drank, <laughs> but even even now, even in our dialogue, if you start talking, there's sometimes I'll I'll interject and say something if I agree, but I do my best. I can feel myself purse my lips and uh, wanting to respond, and mm-hmm. I'll try to like relax, mm-hmm. let him finish his his talk. And I think that is the most like what you're doing now. My dad, I can tell when he wants to speak because he'll go, <laughs> like he'll do like this kind of like chuckle thing, and right? He'll like he's, he's like, and I'm like, you want any? And any time you speak, or, I love this because when I go to an academy or something, mm-hmm. oh my god, <laughs> you can constantly see the people who are not what I would call active listeners. Yeah, hold on, he's fixing his mic stand. If you're just listening to this, shout out to our listeners if we have any on Apple Music. All. 32 Apple, of them Apple podcasts and uh, no I mean listeners as opposed to viewers there's only two of our videos up right now uh, oh yeah I need to get you that money <laughs> uh, yeah I clicked on it the other day and then yeah. I thought Brennan's letting us say this every week and he's not letting him I, know well it's because he, no he got with me I need to there's um it's like a fee because there's a certain data limit and I, I kept telling him I was going to give him the money and I keep I'm all over the place I will get it to you soon <laughs> So we can be uh, out there on Spotify and Apple, iTunes, and uh, all that. But yeah, he was fixing his mic stand. It's fixed now. But Brynn is changing the battery, so we're going to get into a sponsored segment. Um, Sponsored. This episode could be brought to you by you. Uh, If you're a potential sponsor and you're out there watching this, um, please give us an a message like shoot us a message or email us at um the email will be right here in between my hands so please watch it and uh yeah get with us and let's let's get us um let's let's get sponsored uh, what do you hold in there what how much do you take what are all it's those it's a lot of batteries i'll be honest hey but I think listening to people is a big. Uh... Sorry, I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, a big deal, dude. Some Jake, my brother Jake, just said somebody said something really nice about me. Oh, really? I want to hear it. Um, his wife's, my brother's wife's father said, "Daniel wears glasses, right? I like him. You can tell he's got a deep conscience. There's more than just the exterior to him. He's a good kid." How does he know this? Listen, I barely know this man like shout out to him but like i've only met him a couple times like a handful of times watch he's listening to this can't believe he just said that about me that like holy crap thank you um anyway i i that came at a bad time because we were talking about listening (laughs) we're talking about listening and i i was distracted but to be fair he was changing the battery i thought we were on a hiatus yeah so (laughs) i was checking my messages let's talk for those who don't know how to give good listening. You can have good listening skills. Okay. With me, I feel like I have always been an auditory learner. So I don't necessarily show people I'm listening. So you can listen without 
letting the person know you're listening. Mm-hmm. My dad hates this kind of because he's like, that's all fake. It's like, <laughs> it is all for an act. Like if I if I face you, even if I know exactly what you're saying, facing away, facing you is only for the benefit of basically letting you know I'm devoting mm-hmm. my attention is to help you feel better, give you more confidence that what you're saying is important to me. Yeah. But sometimes when I'm really tired. I've got to like watch somebody's mouth move. Like I've got to look at what they're saying for me to even compute. What oh yeah, talking I'll about. get in those places sometimes on this podcast. Like I'll be like I think last episode was the day I hadn't slept in a day and a half. I will be zoned out, dude, and I'll have to make myself listen. But generally, I'm pretty good at listening. I listen all day long, like to people at work and like all kind of stuff. I don't know if I'm like I've never researched how to show someone you're listening, so I don't know if I do that. But I, I, I am listening most of the time. I'm not the person to ask because, honestly, I don't give a f- if no one listens to me. Mm. I just want to well, go, do, well, yeah, go about my think, business. I think what you're saying is important. You need, if someone's talking to you and it's, it's something they're telling you that they, that's more than what they would tell the average like person, then I think you should make an effort to listen. I think that's totally valid. I just meant I don't know if I always indicate properly that I'm listening, but I mostly am. <laughs> I read a lot of stuff on this kind of crap, dude. Like... Mm-hmm. Um, this cat is going insane. Yeah. Hey, what's how long are we at? Get to use the bathroom or something? No, I'm good. Are you done with tonight? No, not done. We're at an hour. Good. Are we seriously? No, we're not done. I'm just saying, like, it's good that we're at an hour. All right, free. I was talking about listening. Um, you said for those who don't know, let's talk about how you can show you're listening. Yeah, I was talking about something else. So. Okay. Well. My hair is blue, so what do I know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was about to just say something. I have a terrible time of memory, though. That's the thing. People also will think that I don't listen to oh, them. Yeah. It's just I forget so fast. I forget things a lot. I forget my day the minute something <laughs> happens. Like I, it's like when, Did your on, day happen? It's like on your phone, you're deleting things. You don't have the memory to store that much. My average day isn't as important as like my 13th birthday because that was like my, you know teenager you know it's I'll delete things all the time like my day if it's just a regular day I'm like oh, delete get out of my mind because uh, it's not as important as the monumental moments you want to keep I forgot what I said already <laughs> I forgot what I was wanting to say so I guess and we're done with all this you're asking me if I'm done and you don't even know what to say well I kind of I just blanked and that that's a big problem with me is I would cut people off all the time is because I also would forget what I was wanting to say. If right, I, so you want to say it as soon so as So I would want to say it. And that's when you just have to kind of accept what if what you have to say is not as important as what the person is saying right now. Yeah. Listen to them. So I still have a story in my head that I just now remembered, like at this moment, that I've been wanting to tell Sable since yesterday morning. Okay. And I just remembered it again. And I still have not been able to tell her because I, t- I lost track of the thing listening to her speak. Mm-hmm. I'm going to forget it again and remain well, remember. Oh, you're not going to tell us? It's for Sable? No, I already kind of told you. It was when the person oh. said Harrison was racist. Oh, okay. Well, they were right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're just kidding. Oh, you know, when I was diverted from going to the square tonight, um, I had to go around it. Guess what I saw turning at a four-way stop sign? Hmm. Jerry Jackson and on the side of his door he had a uh, vote yes uh, for the Rick Plex or oh so he can make a million dollars <laughs> yeah how much is he gonna make off that a million dollars no 30 well I don't know how much he's gonna make because the whole project is 39 million dollars but uh, he'll make a lot he'll make a pretty penny as my as someone would say I think a huge problem is people don't realize how corrupt every political person I would say is like whether whoever you are, whatever side you're on, if you watch what is currently going on currently, like I would just like to say, this video is not an attack of defam- uh, defamation, defamation, defamation on Jerry Jackson, the mayor of Harrison, Arkansas. Anyway, Jesus continue. Christ! <laughs> on the cat again. He was playing with these cords. Well, what do you expect him to play with? Uh I was going to say is like if you do you know any of the thing of the current events with Ukraine and a conversation with the Ukrainian president and our president and Joe Biden and Hunter Biden no this isn't the place for it unless you want to hear about it I just want to hear like a glossary 
Glossary. Uh, glossaries are kind of long. Okay, I just want to hear a yeah. summary. Summary. <laughs> Which you can find on a glossary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Basically, Trump calls president of Ukraine, have a discussion. Whistleblower comes out and says this is what he did on this. He was trying to withhold information. Or he's trying to do a quid pro quo. Scratch my bag, I scratch yours. Okay. Which is, I don't know, dirty. And um, trying. that's where this impeachment process is wanting to be voted on right now. They're wanting, Based to impeach, off of that? they're wanting to impeach Trump right now. Okay. Remember how they wanted to impeach him before with the the always, Mueller the Mueller investigation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after his report came out, they didn't. But now they want to re- impeach him over this. Okay. Which almost nullifies everything that they said was in the Mueller report, but there wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that was their basis now for wanting to start the impeachment process again. But the the whole idea, God, I had a whole idea. <laughs> Imagine that's what it's like eat, eating a, the rind of a grapefruit. Ew. Joe Actually, Biden's son, good. Hunter Biden, is getting paid $50,000 a month being on a board of directors of a gas company in Ukraine, okay. Ukrainian gas company. He doesn't speak Ukraine. He doesn't have a history in gas or uh, energy. So why is he getting paid $50,000 a month? Well, how about he's getting paid by the Ukrainian government to have connections with mm. uh, Joe Biden? There's a lot of stuff going on right now, so I'm not going to talk about whose side to be on. Yeah. I don't even remember why I spoke about this. Oh, Jerry Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Before Trump, people always talked about lying politicians, but now it's almost like every day there's a new story about something being uncovered with not Trump. You can talk about Trump. But with anybody, like mm-hmm. there's always something coming up, like 1.5 billion dollars from China that Joe Biden apparently did not like mention or report that yeah. he was supposed to have reported. 1.5 billion dollars. I won't even make a million dollars in my lifetime, and he made yeah, like a thousand like times a- that. Fifteen thousand times that, right? Or 1.5 thousand. I don't know the wrong, math, dude. Talking to the wrong dude. Guess what? You're talking to the wrong dude when it comes to billions. <laughs> uh, anyways. If you think there's a decent person in politics, you're wrong. When people talk about Trump as being the Messiah, <laughs> when they talk about him, like, pray for him yeah. from all the evil people, yeah. like, look. He's one of them. <laughs> this is going to make a lot of people not want to listen. I voted for the guy, mm-hmm. but I don't think he's Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think he's just as nasty as everybody else, but he's bringing to light a lot of stuff that's really crooked. Everyone, Everyone's crooked. Anyone that's in power... We are paying more in taxes on gas now. Did you know about that? I didn't, but I'm angry. I think we pay 1% more in taxes now as of no, like... I'll, I'll be walking everywhere. As in one or two days ago, I think we're paying 1% more because of Asa Hutchinson. I didn't vote on that, and I will not be participating in it. You can keep my car. I didn't vote on it. I don't I'm, agree to it. I'm it's being taken from my... Dude, with this fall weather, I'm biking everywhere. <laughs> like, I'm, do we want to do this? You want to yeah. ride on my motorcycle? Yes. Are you Let's too, take a ride after inebriated? this. I'm a little bit. Don't... Not only can't don't say that. On, oh, I didn't say I would drive right now. I just right, asked right. if you want to ride right now. Right, right, right. You want to drive right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so that's not a, a, a shtick for anybody. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, uh, kind I, of a without looking and being on anyone's side, you can really see how on both sides it's pretty disgusting. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was funny. I saw him in his little truck. He had his window down, his hand out the window. And uh, I know a lot. I know how he looks, like just by looking at him, because he comes into my place of business a lot. Yeah. Um, Older gent. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, just, I just think it was funny. He had a little, little. Low rectplex. Yeah. It, it should just like say, "Give me money." Yeah, it was like a, it was like, like you, <laughs> like you would expect the corrupt politician in like a film. To yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like vote for this thing that's gonna give me money. And he money. might be the most genuine sweet man. He seemed, he's always nice to me. Like I, like I said, this isn't an attack on the character or anything. Well, you know what? Jerry the devil and the fruit tree also is nice to me. Oh, Eve. yeah. No, that's what I mean. It could just be a fake politeness, but I, I don't you have never anything know. personally against the guy. I just I don't have anything against him personally, but I will if he makes me pay 1% more. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't make enough to pay that much more. And here is where the Electoral College would help if it was divided into districts of our town or something. Mm. I, I don't know how we're divided. I know we've got North Boone and South Boone. I don't know how we're divided, but I mean, I feel like gauging from Little Birdie, there's a there's probably more people who are against it than people who are for it. People I who would are say for that it, too, yeah, I would say because the 
admin of Little Birdie will uh, turn off comments on posts like about it. Yeah. That are shilling for it. I think the fact that she has to do that shows there are more against it than there are for. Or there's more indifferent. I don't know. Well, who knows? Mm-hmm. But um, another thing. Holy. Let's just hope those who are against it and for it both show up to the polls because voting is important. So just be there if you, <laughs> if you want your voice to have that. Seriously. Um, a lot of people think that their voice doesn't matter. Right. but then the, And it probably doesn't. They're the same people who But you definitely don't have a voice if yeah. you don't try. Yeah. Because like you said, there are a lot of people on there who are against it. So if it gets past this November, my first instinct to think will be they didn't show up. If, if there are all these people who didn't want it, they didn't show up. Or the people who do want it are the majority, and they're just not on Facebook. They're not wasting their time. Like, well, I hate when people argue things just because it's what they've heard. Mm-hmm. I, everyone does that. I do it. But I about the recplex, people talking about, well, we need a place for the elderly to go. Mm-hmm. Guess what? The elderly, are not are they getting in free? No. If but they're they not paying for a gym, are they going to go pay for that? They do have those fat... Uh, Social security checks coming. <laughs> oh yeah, those stacked checks yeah. that make one fifth of what I have. Yeah, so I mean, it's not a flex. I feel like that's their intended. That's market. just people don't get paid a lot in mm-hmm. social security, and uh, they're talking about. I mean, and how long will we? Pay? This isn't about the recplex. I don't know a whole lot about it, but what I do know is there's not going to be the amount of people going to use it as everybody thinks there are. Well, yeah, this the people who is poor. Yeah, the <laughs> old people. That aren't going to a gym now? Yeah. They're not going to the rec place. When you have a $30 one a month. Like, yeah. What? I agree with you. There this, was a thing about prices. I didn't even look at this it. This county is poor now. And when we have this million, this sorry, $39 million rec plex, it's not going to be less poor. What do you think the average person makes a year? It's probably twenty to 40000 I would say less. fifteen to twenty. No, fifteen to thirty. Like, the if you're talking about the average person in this town, yeah. I would say, like... I would say f- fifteen to thirty thousand. A year. And you know what? That's probably really accurate. Yeah. The average person probably makes fifteen to thirty thousand in this town. In this town. Yeah. And yeah. So when people you... talk about a wage gap, or when they talk about the one percent having all the money, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I yeah. believe it, but I also don't think there's another better way to. We're not going to get into That's that. a whole different conversation. I still want to talk about Maria's or Marie. Marie's. We, we did go off on a tangent. It was, it was Marie's. It was a better tangent. It was a better it was tangent. Better, yeah. We, we stayed we pretty talk, much on the same yeah, thing except until we talked about Jerry Jackson. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. So we went to Marie's. I like to try new places. Also, I heard that they had a um, unlimited mimosa. This is also why I think that you should be able to pretty much comment or post anytime you have a negative experience. And I understand when that's not good from both mm-hmm. sides. There's only one side that you can see that. What the hell? I'll What's just, in this beer, dude? I'll just quickly, in summary of my view, say that I think, yes, anyone should be able to say anything they want. And also, anyone should be able to read it and make their own decision. Like, just because it was a bad review doesn't mean you should read it and not want to go there you should make your own decision that's why I agree with you but I also think talk to at least I don't know just put some thought into your post at least don't just want to hear my review right now yeah the two dishes that I picked up I go the first time because it was a buffet Mm -hmm. first of all the buffet that's the last place I would think to have a buffet yeah I didn't think it would either apparently they don't have a buffet regularly but their breakfast buffet is a buffet okay I just still don't know. Maybe there's not a buffet throughout the other so days. Did you have them for dinner or was it breakfast? breakfast? It was Sunday oh. Sunday brunch. I feel like they're more like a dinner centric restaurant. That's what it sounded like to me. But what well, you're about to get a full okay. review. Let's hit it. First of all, we get there before they open, and their times to open did not reflect what was posted. Oh, so we sat there waiting. <laughs> Damn. Uh, okay. That wasn't a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. I had never been to the Hotel Seville. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It I, looks pretty in there. I've never been there either, but I drive past it a Dude, lot. Dude, let's go all get a room. Yes. Tomorrow night. We could check in right now. We could. Because it's a hotel. They're open. It up. is. That's insane to me. I love life. Yeah. Is the restaurant open 24-7? No. Dang. 
You should have one that is. I just described how I had to wait for them to open. Yep, yep, yep. (laughs) (laughs) And when they did, um, the buffet did look good. Mm -hmm. It was like a little bar, like on tables, you know. Very reminiscent of like when you... Oh, never mind. Okay. It's been a while since you've worked at Walmart. You know, I don't work at Walmart, but if I were to work at Walmart, I imagine that they'd have tables set up with like those pans that have candles yeah. and everything keeping the food warm. Yes. Stack of plates. First one I grab, I feel something on my fingers. Mm. Turn over and there's <laughs> on it. What? Well, I say <laughs> shit. There's gunk and nasty on it, okay? I don't know what it was. I'm assuming it was nasty food. Mm-hmm. Put it down, I'll grab another plate, check it over, it's good. Get my food and go. Come back. The next plate I get, the same exact way, except it was on the top. Mm. Now, having worked in food, I understand that they probably have a sanitizer washer Mm -hmm. and not a dishwasher. But even then, you just wash your dishes better with a sprayer and then put it in the sanitizer. Yeah, that's what we do. Do Now, yes, maybe they got a new dishwasher person. Who knows? But... If that's my immediate thing, I don't want someone else to go there and eat and then them not know to look at their plates. I want to be like, hey, the plates are dirty. Check it. I think my whole thing is, did you bring that to their attention? No, I just set it to the side, and I'm 100% sure if you set your plate to the side at the breakfast bar right next to the thing, they go, oh. Oh, you didn't set it back on the... No, I put it in its own pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically saying, hey, did you know this? That's good, yeah. I just... I just... I'm not afraid of confrontation when it, unless it comes to my food. Right. I'm afraid of making a, a fuss because I'm one of those people, like, say I order a Coke mm-hmm. and I get a Fanta, a Sonic, mm-hmm. and I tell them, and they're like, oh, we'll bring you out a new one. I'm like, no, I can't drink it. Really? Yeah. I, I have this, That's I worked in food, I have a specific fear that somebody's going to tamper with my food because wow. I know how many people did tamper with food. Wow. Not food that they sent out to people, but just what they would do to other associates. There's times people would put oil in their stuff or like hot wow. sauce or something, yeah. which is an offense. You can go to jail for it. Yeah. And I also, I just know how disgusting it can get with food. And when you work mm-hmm. in a kitchen, you know, I never wanted to be the guy who had to risk it. So I don't ever send anything back. If I do, I don't come back for a <laughs> long time. Yeah. I want them to forget about me. <laughs> so that's another reason I don't. I think it's a bit mission. paranoid. But yeah. It is very paranoid. I understand that. Yeah. No, but, I see your point as well. But I I also know the culture of a kitchen and how mm-hmm. they talk. Mm-hmm. Not that they do those things that they talk about, but they do threaten to do some things, okay? I think there's a disconnect because in my kitchen, they just speak Thai, so I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, son. Yeah. They, they throw in some burn in <laughs> Thai, okay? I'm sure they are. <laughs> They're like, look at this f- my boy. <laughs> no, they love me. He yeah. doesn't talk to his dad yet. <laughs> or at least they love me in English, but I don't know about in Thai. I love you in every language. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, so anyways, Dang. I set <laughs> I set my place to the side and I get my food. My food's mediocre. I don't know. I I guess I just expected it to be like really nice and fresh. I eat my first plate and go back for seconds, and I recognize the guy serving the food. I used to work with this guy at Brick Oven. Mm-hmm. I hope to God he's not listening. Okay. I'm sorry if you're listening, but I have witnessed this guy go up behind back of Brick Oven. Piss behind the AC units. Okay. Come back in without washing his hands and continue making food. <laughs> I know how nasty it is in kitchens. I know how nasty people can be. Mm-hmm. If you're anything like me, you wash your hands after peeing because sometimes things happen. Yeah. You never know. Well, even if they didn't happen, just wash them. Well, yeah, just wash them. No yeah. one wants to eat your penis hands. <laughs> I'm just saying, in the event he still thinks, hey, it's just my penis. No. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. You just always wash your hands. You never know. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's just. I've witnessed this happen. So I'm like, all right, I'm eating his food now. All right? Can I live with this? Yeah, I had enough mimosas. I will say the mimosas are exactly like I've made before. I thought they were going to... I've had... Shout out to Joey Luker. The first <laughs> mimosa I ever had. I was like, 
damn, this is a fine ass mimosa. I don't know yeah. what this drink is, but I'm gonna drink it again. Mm. Yeah, I make it at home. It's like ah, uh, good Marie's Maria's tastes the same as making it at home. Mm. But it's unlimited. So I had about four. Nice. Uh, I was like, next. <laughs> um, I did like their muffins and stuff, but I want to describe how their food. They had a Cajun pasta. Okay. You ever had a Southwest salad or Southwest food and had a Southwest seasoning on it? Yeah, like Southwest taquitos. Just think. tastes like kind of Chipotle and ranch, Tex-Mex, maybe. Yeah, like kind of. It tastes like Tex Mex pasta. Mm. What was it supposed to be? I missed. Uh, Cajun. Cajun. Uh, that's so weird. Cajun that's tortellini. Even, that's not even the flavors of Cajun. That's Tex Mex. Like what? Um, they had some good loaded mashed potatoes. Tortellini though is really good. Tort- oh, I'm not saying I did not like the pasta. Right, yeah. I'm saying the pasta was not what I expected. Yeah, it was still good. It just did not taste Cajun. Mm. I would have been fine with the Tex Mex pasta. Mm-hmm. Title. Just label it right. Yeah. God damn it. Let's see. They had green beans. <laughs> I love green beans. No, but not theirs. And do you like those French cut green beans? I love yeah. those. I also fully, wholeheartedly say my experience was dampered, dampened, <laughs> dampered, <laughs> dampened by the fact of how they serve the food. If it was fresh. And come out of the kitchen like that, I bet that would have been great. But they, it, like, it's how, how do they how do they do that? Do they they have to cook it the night before and then reheat it all to have I it? Hope not. I mean, that's probably what they have to do, honestly. Yeah. Because I, I, maybe they cooked it that day in the morning, seven a.m., but got it ready. I, I doubt it. I feel like it was one of those things that was refrigerated and they just heated up. Mm. And I don't know. It wasn't the experience that I expected from Jamie's. It wasn't Jamie's, but the owners. Well, I, I don't know much about it, but I, I the way I viewed it through social media is like supposed to be like their take on like a five star dining experience because it's in the Hotel Seville and it's like supposed to be oh, a bit fancier, right? The service is great. It was like a fancy experience. Right, but what I mean is the food didn't match that. Kinda. No. It seems from, sort of more like a ranch house, like hometown, like. Vibe, Honestly, like you just hit it on the nail. That's what, I, yeah. It felt like a hometown ranch house, right? Or, instead of <laughs> no, I did not mean to say that. I love ranch house. I'm yeah. a hometown. I love. I, <laughs> it felt like a hometown Golden Corral, right? Like yeah. a yeah. That's exactly what it felt like. But what saved it was the unlimited mimosas. Mm-hmm. It was also the dining experience because mm-hmm. our waiter was super nice. I, I really like that waiter. I don't remember mm-hmm. his name. It, he was a good he was a good dude and the scenery mm-hmm. it did feel the downtown yeah it not the but yes right, but, but also the inside, the the inside of it okay it was a really nice place the two downsides was how they served the food yeah three downsides the dirtiness <laughs> of the the two the two plates I pick up were dirty yeah and then um how you get it because you're in this dining area which is really nice. It looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. It looks like a five star area, honestly. Mm-hmm. But then you have to walk out, go down these steps, go across the really? foyer, foyer of the hotel, oh. past the front desk, walk into this other room. There's the buffet. You walk all the way back up to your <laughs> with your plate of food right to the main room. That's weird. Here's, it's weird. Here's I can live I think, with it. It's weird. Here's what I think. Not worth I, the sixty bucks we paid. If an endless for two people. If like a breakfast buffet wants to be portrayed in like a five star restaurant kind of sense, I think. It's still a buffet, but you you order kind of you know what I'm saying. They bring it to you, like kind of like how you're. you're so I have to go are. get it. Get it. I tell the guy, hey, this is what I want, and then he goes and gets off the buffet. Kind of, yeah. Or they make it fresh. Fresh. That would be even. That'd more. be cool. Yeah, like like this is our buffet options. Tell right, me what you want, and then they cook want. it. Yes, precisely because everything on the buffet isn't going to be eaten by someone, and that way it sits out. It's, it's old, and when that person does want buffets it, are money pits. Exactly for the for the business for the business yes, um, that's why I think you have the buffet. How what what do you want on the buffet? Will make you an endless amount of it or how? Dude, that is really smart. Well, I, I think I didn't create that. I think a lot of places like five star places do that. Like fancy. do they do they even have buffets? I think in like LA, I've watched like Try Guy videos where they will go to like a, a brunch place. You no, know? not the Try Guy. <laughs> what? 
I'm thinking of the guy who was oh, the Asian. It. I'm sorry. I'm worth, worth it. it. Yeah. I, not Try Guy videos. A lot, I think there's a couple of them in the same thing. But the Worth It videos. And they'll go they'll go to like these really fancy places. I think those places have a buffet. But the buffet is, tell us what you want. We'll make it fresh. Because I can't picture like a, a Michelin star restaurant having a left out buffet. It wasn't. Maybe with cooks there like making it fresh. I don't know. It was mediocre. I would go back if it did not cost us what it cost us. I think the buffet itself was fifteen bucks mm-hmm. a piece. Me and Sable each had a fifteen dollar ticket. I, 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 not that it was separate. I'm saying mm-hmm. one buffet was fifteen dollars, and then I think it was eight dollars for the mimosas. For the mimosas, so mm-hmm. that was sixteen on the fifteen. So all of a sudden we've hit sixty. It mm-hmm. was a little bit different price than that because I think the total amount she paid was sixty. Sable okay. paid. Sable took me out. Yeah, and she paid sixty bucks. So maybe the buffet was a little bit less, but I know the mimosas were eight dollars. Yeah. So we had a definitely eight uh, sixteen. So what's 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 sixty minus sixteen? Don't ask me. But God, I can't honors and math. <laughs> Maths. Um. No, I just think. I think it's probably not that hard to do a buffet the way I'm talking about. I think some places. I don't do think it. it would be it either. Yeah. And it, because you're not making everything on the buffet, you're just making what that person wants. If they end up wanting, yeah, one item may never be ordered. All and that. also, look, have it priced like, like, it, you can either price it all one price and be like order what you want, or you can have each item priced at like two bucks, like two bucks for the endless eggs, you know, or however much eggs you want or whatever. Add your, wow. they're just really low. Look, no, look I like. think I would price the whole buffet, especially. Right. It would be worth the fifteen if it was getting made fresh. Yeah. Pr- yes. Pr- exactly. If it was fresh per order, maybe because a little more. If you do it priced differently, then all of a sudden you've gotten away from a buffet type, and you're ordering things. You're right. Yeah. So I love your idea. And when I go to, when I went to Marie's, I was, you know, the only thing keeping us from being able to do that because I could have cooked mm-hmm. everything on that menu. Right. I could have done all of it, guys. Yeah. I truly think I'm a good cook. <laughs> I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I'm Gordon Ramsay, but I know I can cook good. That's what I'm talking about. Like the only we could thing, do that, except for paying for that the yeah. place. And also, like the fact that you're getting up and getting it yourself, kind of like you could do it yourself. At Why your am house. I paying fourteen bucks? You're doing it that. yourself at your house, so at least put it on a menu where I can be like, "Yeah, I want this and this brought to me," so you don't have to walk through a lobby. And that is that. a beautiful idea. Yeah. I really like that idea. I think places do it. I'm not going to take credit. For I think it, it's. Man. I think it. Is somewhere I would go again, mm-hmm. but not for the buffet. I feel like you should try their dinner. Like it seems to me like they're trying to be like a five star place. I think any place that offers breakfast should have good breakfast. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what I was gonna say. Okay, what were you gonna say? I agree with you. Any place that offers, um, what was I telling you? About? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't what was know. I telling you I was gonna make tonight? Uh, rosemary. No, Tarragon. I could cook it a special way. Sous vide. sous vide. Any place that offers sous vide, I go, we need more of that. I want to bring like these other things because a lot of people mm-hmm. don't even know what sous vide is. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it means? Vacuum sealed or something. It means in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. You cook in a vacuum. Not that you yourself are in a vacuum dying while cooking. <laughs> Your food's in a vacuum being cooked at a slow temperature. Yeah. Um, I recently got a, a sous vide yeah. cooker and I've been using it and dude... <laughs> It's so great. I love cooking sous vide. Chef's kiss. <laughs> so, mini chef's kiss. <laughs> so when they put that on the thing, I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. Now, the problem is when I have the experience I do have, because I, I see it from your point of view because I've been there, mm-hmm. but I also go, I don't want to pay 60 bucks again for another meal mm-hmm. because I work, I have to work an hour yeah. for the same thing I just paid for like, Ten Did minutes. They had the sous vide on the menu on the breakfast. Menu? I don't even. Th- we like didn't buffet? actually. I don't think we even saw a menu. Okay. That's, maybe maybe we did, but I don't think we did. I don't know. I think they should. They would be better off if they presented you with a menu. You don't want because you don't want everything on the buffet. You didn't eat everything on there, did you? I mean, when I get a buffet, I will try everything <laughs> on that buffet. Well, that's good. Yeah, and you should still be able to do that on the menu. And here's why it. that's a money pit mm-hmm. is because people will try everything exactly. and not eat it, and now you will see you will see yeah. full plates being oh, sent yeah. back to the kitchen. Yeah, because people a lot of people are disgusting and have no like respect for like the food or whatever, or yes. starving people, or also because they just paid fifteen <laughs> right. bucks when their normal meal would cost less. Yeah, yeah, like but they'll they'll get food and just waste it like unabashedly like. 
I, I'm not a huge fan of doing that. Like, I'll get a little bit of something, taste it. If I don't like it, you know, move on. But I agree. People load up their plates and they're like, ah, oh, that wasn't that great. I thought I was going to like it. Push it away. <laughs> like, I won't load up. I will I will load up, but I won't load up with a specific thing. Yeah. I'll get a huge mound mm-hmm. of everything. I won't be able to eat everything. <laughs> But I will have gotten such a small amount of everything that I'm like, yeah, yeah. this won't be a bad deal. Uh, and their desserts, it seemed like just um, those little Debbie muffins. Oh, yeah. Probably was. It may <laughs> it may have been. I don't know. These were like wrapped in their own wrapper. So, mm. But they had that consistency <laughs> stick to your roof. Now, yeah. I love that. I like that. I love those muffins. That's a good muffin. But... That's what it tasted like. Yeah. And I thought... Factory. Kind of like a factory thing yeah. going on there. Yeah. yeah. It didn't taste fresh. So... It's probably not Little Debbie, but it's probably like a restaurant distributor who makes them and they get them. Marie's? Lower their price by maybe, I don't know, 20%, 40%. Maybe what I had was specific to brunch on Sundays, but I didn't... Mm-hmm. Not worth 60 bucks. Yeah. I think you're right about them being money pits. Just have a menu. I have a menu to order from. I would have liked that. Like Jamie's, or sorry, Ranch House, their menu, like for breakfast, their stuff is pretty cheap. So you can kind of get like a buffet situation going. Yeah. You can get a you, couple eggs for like two bucks. You like, eat the same amount on a buffet, but the restaurant has not paid for the buffet's right. worth. I think it equals out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do know. Because the restaurant's supposed to work at a, a rule of thirds anyways. I think they're supposed to... Whatever it costs to make something, you charge two thirds more than that. Okay. So, if if eggs are ten cents a piece, you charge thirty cents an egg. Mm-hmm. That's what I re- that's what I re- was reading on about. Is that like to break even or to make a profit? That's to profit. make a profit because okay. you would just charge ten cents. If you want to? Oh yeah, break even. You would just charge ten cents to cover for the food. Yeah. Twenty cents to cover for labor, and then the thirty cents is to profit. make some money. Okay. If yeah, eggs were ten cents, what are we at? Hey, I feel like we actually went more in depth. I feel like this is talk. more streamlined. Yeah. yeah, we're getting better. <laughs> Maybe we are. We didn't have a plan at all when we sat down. Yeah, that's true. A shout out to Brennan. He's about to be gone for three days, shout and so he Brennan. changed his schedule to come over tonight. Have a fun time, bro. We'll miss you. Hell oh, yeah, brother. We'll miss you. Dilly dilly. Shout God. out to everybody else in the world. <laughs> dilly dilly. Dylan. Empty. <laughs> Mine was empty, but I pretended to drink. <laughs> For Dylan. I just pretended too. Yeah, you're right. For the audio listeners, he did. Uh, thank you guys for watching, listening. Did you have anything else? I. Um. I still want to talk about 9/11 conspiracy. Like tonight? No, not tonight. Oh, okay. yeah, I would, do an but I don't know enough. Yeah, because I, I Sable's dad had sent me those links. And I still haven't looked. Yeah, I have a link from Jocelyn. I haven't looked at entirely. It's a alien thing. Shout out to Jocelyn. We do a lot of shout outs, but none of these people probably even watch. Shout Jocelyn might be the only one watching. There's gonna be somebody I know is not watching, but I was gonna. Oh, Brian! Shout out to him. I know he's not gonna watch this, or at least watch him point. be one of the one people though. Maybe he is, but I know he's not gonna watch to this point. But if he does, shout out to Brian. Like I. His song on Facebook, the Walmart. It was Mac, actually really good. It was good. I, now listen, I didn't get the same experience listening to it on Brendan's phone. When I was in my car waiting on you <laughs> in my stereo, playing it at almost top volume, I had like an <laughs> otherworldly experience. Like I literally met uh, a former coworker and a current coworker for them. <laughs> Brian has this awesome song. Like we need to just plug him. Like like put a link or something to his to his whatever, dude. He's good. It was good. Also. Plans for the future again. I want to start putting. We did use my music one time, mm-hmm. but I don't think people know that I play that, and it that was, was such a small amount. And it was just the Messenger by Lincoln Park. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. Uh, Chester. Yeah, rip, rip, rip the rip, <laughs> dude. You know how I, I remember? I was in the living room when I first heard that he had passed. Yeah, I I remember where I was. I too. was sitting on the couch, and I was like, "What?" Funnily enough, dude, I, that hit me. Yeah, I, was I didn't a, cry, but I was like, I was at a um, a buffet at a casino in California with Maya, and this was a good buffet. Like, and they brought it down. Like, 
This, I think, was on par, like, when you go on your cruise, it was that kind of buffet. Because don't you, like, order endless food? You Yes, you yeah. can. <laughs> the food is five-star style. Right. While being a little less tasty. Yeah. Well, this was a good buffet. They had, like, steak on the buffet. Like, it was at a casino. Like, they want you to... They like, want you to spend that move Yeah. It was a good buffet. Get wine but, and dined in 69. But uh, we were... Yeah, that's, that's where we were when we found out about Chester. It was pretty... It was a pretty mood-dampening moment. Does Maya listen to Lane Park? She does, and her dad did a lot and does Are you serious? Yeah. I would not expect that. Like, um, it was like a... Like, they're like a big <laughs> rock. Like, they're from the Philippines, right? Yeah. Can you imagine, yeah. like, in the Philippines? That's their national it. thing. I think, they, like, I think they love it. Like, it Park! Yeah. Her dad, her dad really loves, like, classic, like, rock and, like, the early like rock bands and stuff and uh but they are not well like, not not rock. i didn't mean like yeah they bridged they they they, they had a lot going on yeah like, they but he like he liked them and like you know Green they like, bridged the, techno and yeah. electronic to like screamo and it was a big yeah it was a big like punk. whoa like big moment like when a celebrity dies you don't always feel that whoa unless they were like close oh to yeah, i couldn't care half the people that died well <laughs> i care no i don't care <laughs> Live your life how you want. If you die, you're dead. If right. You... I kind of get that, but I mean, it's no. Still... <laughs> but in his instance, that did hit me. I was like, I actually like grew up listening to that guy. Yeah. I wasn't like he was my brother, mm-hmm. but I feel like he was. Well, he the headphones you... my brother had on his head. <laughs> he made you. He made you happy at some point. He in did. Life. I would. I, I sp- last before we go, and then you can say whatever you want. <laughs> Specific memory. Um, so while I was in working at Brick Oven, that's when I was also dating my ex-girlfriend mm-hmm. before Sable. We broke up. I remember being very depressed. Yeah. But I would sit there like 10 a.m. before we open. I, we open at 10 a.m. No, I would go in at 10 a.m. We'd open at 11. 9 a.m. I'd be sitting there and I'm blaring some like, not the hunting party. What was the one after the hunting party? I don't remember. Um, I remember the hunting party was probably the one album that I didn't really like that much. Mm-hmm. What was, uh, I don't remember. Wow, I don't remember the. One More Light. I think One More Light was out at that time. Yeah. But what was the one with kind of the electronic when they started doing that? Uh, the sun, um, sun, no, something to do with the sun. Shining. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. No. I got their, I got their CV. Talk about whatever you want. I'm looking this up. Okay. Uh,. <laughs> well guys we've had a lot of failed sponsors this episode uh, so I'm not going to try to uh, play off on another one but if you go to Timex.com <laughs> you can get one of these functional whoa <laughs> functional uh, time pieces for your a thousand suns okay we're done <laughs> a thousand suns is what came out and um, living things okay uh, but uh, specifically, a thousand suns. There, there was a messenger. Is on a thousand suns. I remember I would just sit there and just listen to Lincoln Park on the album. And that like got me ready. Yeah. That like boosts me up. People talk about music all the time, but I, I, you know I don't listen to music much. Yeah, I know, it's, it's weird. I need to be in the space for music because I actually saw some kind of meme today. I think Kaylee posted it. Shout out! Shout out to Kaylee. Talking about how people who get goosebumps when listening to music probably are more mm-hmm. emotional in life and stuff like that. And I feel like I am an emotional person. Mm-hmm. Not always am I crying, <laughs> but I get angry. I don't think crying is the only emotion. Though, yeah. Emotion is a lot of things. I get very emotional, dude. Yeah. I get passionate at whatever. Yeah. So I think that's why so I don't want to listen to music all the time. It needs to be like a special, like, dedicated time. I, I kind of feel that, but I... I enjoy music like all throughout my day, and I can. Well, I appreciate silence as music. Right. I mean, when, when, we, when we, I know that sounds funny, but when I took music theory and whatever, like they described that the pauses in between, you know, mm-hmm. playing a note that's intended and that's to help yeah, you feel yeah, something. Yeah, of course. I love just the basking in the absence of sound because I, I mm-hmm. guess that to me is also a th- type of music. I don't know. I think it's too intellectual for most. Too intellectual, too too highbrow, maybe. But, um, I get what you're saying. Like, a lot of the times when an album comes out or something or an album I haven't listened to in a while, I'll dedicate a time to listen to it. But I also, when I'm driving, will listen to the music nonstop. I don't I still appreciate it. I, I don't know why I can't. I Maybe I think that by splitting my time, it's not appreciating it as much. But yeah, that's just, music does hit me hard. 
I think people will think that because I don't listen to music a whole lot that I don't like music. Mm -hmm. I love music. You just like it. And it, and it like a lot of songs will bring me to tears, dude. I, yeah. <laughs> I hate to admit well, it. No, that's what Half I'm the music I, think, I listen I think to it's does that. De- Sensitized. I almost feels wrong to say that, but you don't listen to it as much. So when you do, it's like I think Sable hates it. I love Billie Eilish's music so much. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like I don't know, just like her voice. I'm just like that's hard. But I was I was the same way with Lincoln Park, dude. Yeah, like, some of their songs are just like when the, when they're uh, when under One More Light, his like last song of the album. Mm-hmm. When One More Light goes out. Um, who cares if one more light goes out? I do. To me, in my mind, I'm just singing like, "Who cares if one more soul di- or one more person dies?" Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I care. How heavy is that with Dude, like Chester's? That hits situation. me. His music always hits me so f- hard. That's Bleed nice. it out, dude. I remember I would I would sit there. You know, I'm not a rap guy. Yeah. I would sit there and memorize their lyrics yeah, to their. Man. Bleed it out was the first rap. That's home. what I'm. Hold on, no, I got go finished. Go <laughs> I'm passionate, bro. Yeah, I would sit there and like sing "Bleed It Out" to myself over and over because like that was at the time that I kind of felt like mm-hmm. I was 16, mm-hmm. 17. You got the angst. I got the I got the angst. Mm-hmm. I got the depression bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm finally coming out of it. Yeah, maybe that's just growing pains. But dude, I felt that music, man. That's I play it out, take it deeper, just to throw it away. Well, that's what I'm, I mean. That's I believe you because I've said before. Um, I think music is one of like a, one of a couple like universal languages that everybody can kind of get behind. Because even somebody like you who doesn't listen to it a lot, like not like throughout your day, you know, in the car, you still have that same appreciation, if not a deeper appreciation for it. That millions of people do. And it's like hearing things, hearing art. I think instead of saying music, I think maybe art is a universal. Film or whatever. I want to ask you this too. Okay. You're Bryn as well because you, I think, are the most musically inclined person in this room. When I, you know, like when you read a book, you have a movie going on, you're mm-hmm. imagining everything that's going on. When you hear music, do you do the same thing? I'll yeah. picture. I do that as yeah. well. Every time I hear specific mu- and this is why I love, I think, certain groups, playing Park, but when I'm specifically thinking of imagery, I think of uh, Muse. Mm-hmm. Every time I hear of their specific, it was uh, Exogenesis Part <clears throat> One, maybe or Part Three. I don't remember. But every time I listen to that, I have this specific like, oh man, this is what I can't. A this needs times, to be acted out. A lot of the times, that's intentional. Like I've, I've, like artists will before they write an album or a piece or a song, they'll spend time fleshing out the world and the the sound and the image they want that piece of work to have. And that's sometimes now you'll sometimes get a unique one like that you, but it's it's intentional. They want you to view it a certain way. At least some of the time, I think well, it's really cool. You know, like when you put star waves on our, our wedding video, I don't describe that, but every time I hear that, I have a specific imagery that comes to my mind, and mm-hmm. like, f hits me. I want to cry every time I hear star waves. So when I made that my uh, my ringtone. Mm-hmm. When I was in class just uh, yesterday, this girl's like, "Why does it sound like a movie?" I'm like. <laughs> Cause it fucking is a movie. She didn't even have to. She didn't have to watch the movie to know it was on a movie. Yeah. When she listened to it, she's like, "That's, That's I'm hearing saying. a movie, man." People, I love composers, producers, like musicians. Because M83, put, I love you. Star waves it up every day of your life. They will put. Um, <laughs> no, we're gonna I'm sponsor M83 right now, dude. Okay. They make me want to cry harder than I've ever cried in my life. Like I just feel love every time I listen to Star Waves. Mm-hmm. If you can imagine just. What love looks like. Every time I hear Star Waves, I'm just like, oh, I awesome. feel love. I love dude. the art. Can and that's that. on my wedding video. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I know you guys, man. I'm glad too, bro. I'm glad we live in a world where we have music and art. Well, you already forgot about me. Creative. You're planning on leaving me tomorrow. You're leaving me for three days. <laughs> what the hell? These cats are about to leave me too, man. Everybody's about to leave me. Damn. I'm not going anywhere. All right. I don't know how to tell you that is depressing or happy. Wow. <laughs> hey, look, we went on about 20 more minutes past what we said. <laughs> okay. Okay. Dude, I do want to talk specifically just about music sometime because. Yeah, me too. And, and art in general. And like. I'll I just, go listen to Yo Yo Ma. 
What? You know the the, yeah. the really good um, uh, cello player? Yeah. I'll just sit there and listen to Yo Yo Ma. That's what I'm saying. Art and creativity and music. It's it's really interesting to look at because it's like, like you said, you don't consider yourself a rap guy, but Blink and Park did this sort of hip hop rap thing. They had like, an album with Jay Z. Did you yeah, know that? I did know that. Yeah. A lot of people and, don't know that. I knew it, and you were like, um, you liked it because it was them. There's somebody you liked, and and they did it in their way, and you did like it, even though you're not a rap guy. So it's it's awesome how we can bridge those genre like gaps. And it's like as long as it's not Terabithia, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sad movie. <laughs> yeah, a kid hey, dies. People talk about the movie all the time. A kid dies. Maybe now. this is going to show how I'm a little bit older than you guys. I think of the book every time. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, I know it's a book, too. I yeah, I know you it. know it's a book. Well, I, I wasn't coming off. <laughs> I never read a book, and I've barely seen the movie. I just know it's sad, and the girl dies, or the kid, the guy dies. I hey. Know. Spoiler alert. We're also going to talk about books. Okay. Right eventually. <laughs> but uh, a book that has always stuck with me throughout my life. You will never guess it. So I'm just going to tell you. It's okay. called Adam of the Road. And I read it when I was in fourth grade, and I remember at the time it was, it like should not have belonged in the elementary school. Mm -hmm. It was about a minstrel who had like lost his family, and that's when I learned. Oh, I think people will realize a lot of our vocab, or at least my vocab, was learned through books. Mm -hmm. So even if I pronounce something wrong, it's because I try to figure it out with my own. Yeah, and English is not very phonetic. And anyways, uh, Adam of the Road is always stuck with me and I want to buy that book but every time I think about buying it I forget and just do it that's the book I want to own that's why we live in uh, like this day and age you can go on your phone and buy it right now I did that recently because I have a book that's really special to me called um, I Am The Messenger Mr. Right? Popper's Penguins <laughs> shout out to Mr. Popper's Penguins Jim Carrey should never have made a movie they should never have made a movie that book was great on its own Mr. I don't know Popper's who that Penguins. is um, it's called I Am The Messenger by Marcus Susick and uh I just really liked it, and so I bought a couple copies down the road of it because I either lost them or gave them away. Um, but it's really beautiful. You can go on your phone, go to Amazon, and order a copy right now while you're thinking about it <laughs> instead of like waiting and forgetting. Problem is, is with books like mine. I don't know about yours, but mine, I only found like one or two copies, Hard and they were expensive. Mm. Ben's trying to say he's into the underground stuff. Like it's not. No, like, not underground. Like but what I mean was. When I was too young to even know what underground was, <laughs> that's you what was what in the underground library. was before underground. Was underground. <laughs> Look, I was <laughs> digging in the underground and found the under underground, the subterranean ground. Yeah, you are into a lot of like, like I love everything things. that people don't. I know, like. I've noticed that. And people will act like that's just me trying to get attention, and maybe that is. But for some reason, I enjoy the things that people don't that's find fine. popular. Yeah, I think there's a beauty in that. It's like. Um, Famas forever. Yeah, sure. Famas forever, brother. Oh no! I keep saying I get kept F two thousand forever. Is that the is that the equivalent of the Famas? No. Oh. The Famas is again like a lot of people would use. Oh. But the F two thousand, no, it wouldn't would use. use. Okay. I use that. I'll shoot. It's just like. I think maybe that's why I like old World War Two guns. Cause who do you know that has them? Yeah, you could explain half my life is just trying to do stuff that other people don't do, is because, so I can be unique. Maybe that's so I can be remembered when I die, because I want to be remembered when I die. Because I, the quote, you have two deaths: one when you die, and one, one when, when your name is spoken for the last time. Last time. Have I said that a lot? No, I, I've heard you said it once or twice, but I I know that as well. And it's that used to be a life like my life used to be centered on that fear. I was like so afraid of death, and not just death, but being forgotten. Yeah, you don't want to be forgotten. You want yeah. to make an impact. And it still is a deep uh, fear that's there, but it's less. So, less I don't know. I just always like things that other people don't like. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's so intrinsically ingrained into my body that I just naturally like things without knowing if other people like them. Or if I have to find out people don't like them, and then I'm like, oh, I like that. I, mean, I don't know. Hey, look. We've gone super long. Should stop way longer. No, I feel like this is good. I mean, this is great. It was good. It was, well, it wasn't good. It yep. was bad. Every, <laughs> every time we release one, and I mention it to Brendan, I'm like, I really like that. He's like, Yeah, it was my favorite one. <laughs> I think we're, we're growing. Yeah, we are. I, this was one of my favorites. Why? I just wish we could grow our viewership. I'm not too worried about that because I just I'm more focused on putting stuff out uh, and it being something.
I want viewers to listen to. Yeah. I'll be worried about our viewers. Maybe I will repeat it again. I think I'm just a narcissist because I'm like, why doesn't everyone want to listen to me talk for <laughs> an hour and a half? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I get that. I really like, I'm a fan of podcasts, but I'll go days without watching one. But then sometimes I'll get in this thing where I'll watch one for a day, like a couple of day every week. And then I'll go again, you know, forget. But um, yeah, I like. Sorry, I hit stop recording. <laughs> well, they didn't even have to know that. They seamlessly <laughs> did it. But for bad hit podcast. Stop recording and then now we have to pretend we have an outro. So Daniel, this is happy birthday to you. Happy 21 years. Thank you. It means a lot. Um. I hope I'll be here another 21. I wasn't <laughs> done yet. Oh, continue. I just <laughs> was interjecting. I just want to say I'm happy to know you. I'm happy to know both of you. But it's your birthday. I want you to know. I'm happy to know you. It means a lot, bro. I'm happy to know you too. And uh, and Brendan. And uh, probably you. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jocelyn, you mean. She's the only one that watches. <laughs> Shout out. Yeah, Shout I'm out. here for another 21 years, so. I hope longer. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Until next week. Until next week.